Hi, this is David Finch. In this tutorial, I wanted to cover drawing figures uh, in environments as opposed to drawing figures and then trying to figure out an environment around them, which is something that um, can really lead to pretty static looking panels. This is uh, based on a suggestion from Jason Hall, so thank you very much, Jason. All right, let's get started. So what I have here is a grid. I actually did this uh, just in Manga Studio, but it's exactly what it would look like um, if I did this traditionally on paper. Uh, on paper, I, I use a ruler tape and another piece of paper so I can get my lines extended out far enough. Uh, but basically, this is just a, a three-point perspective grid. I've got another one uh, just down here for a different type of shot. And what I want to do is just quickly sketch in some loose backgrounds and then um, tighten them up just a little bit and then draw some figures in there just to give a sense of the way that I would approach a panel drawing figures to make sure that they look like they're in perspective. So uh, to start out, I've already drawn in just a, a quick sketch um, on top of my perspective of what I want to draw. And you can see this is very, very simple. I don't have any snapping turned on for this. And this is just something just to give me a quick guide, uh, just so I know where I want my actual detail to go. And this is the way that I always work on paper. I, I use a kneaded eraser and just knock this right down. So uh, because I don't have a kneaded eraser on the computer, it, I can just reduce the opacity and uh, get kind of the same result. So I'm going to bring that down to just about there, maybe a little bit, a little bit less. Um, and now it's it's there, but it's not going to interfere too much with the, the final drawing. So let me come in just a little bit. Um, I've got my pencil tool selected, and this is this is the way that I always draw. I really don't like using a ruler. Uh, I find it gives me a really uh, inorganic kind of a static look. So uh, even for technological kind of backgrounds, I, I really stay away from it. Uh, and once I'm finished, the great thing about the computer is I can just um, I can just remove my my background layers. And I just realized that I'm actually drawing on the background layer. So let me go to a different layer. So yeah, once I've once I've got this kind of worked out, I can go back and just start deleting uh, what's behind it. So that's a nice feature of working on the computer. So I don't want to take forever with this, and I have a feeling I'm going to end up zipping through and and fast forwarding through some of this just so we can move on to really what the point of this video is, and that's um, drawing the figures uh, in the perspective of the shot. But I do want to make it at least, at least look somewhat decent and believable, so bear with me just for a minute here. I find the computer provides so many advantages, and uh, I'm happiest when I can find ways to work around those advantages and work as traditionally as possible, even though I'm on the computer. It just gives me such a much more comfortable kind of a feel. Draw some shingles down through here. And, you know, I've already got my basic structure down, so I know you know, kind of where I want to go with it, it makes everything very easy. And in this part of drawing backgrounds for me, I always find pretty relaxing and, and easy. I enjoy it. I really want to point out though, that because I have all my perspective drawn in, I have a guide that, that really works well for me as I draw. So I can just throw all these lines in and I see exactly where the real perspective is. Um, and really, if I'm working on paper and I need more of a ruled line, uh, ruled line and I'm having a little bit of trouble making it uh, as straight as I'd like and it's getting a little time consuming faking it, uh, I can just snap with a ruler. Um, and on the computer, I just use shift and that'll hit it with a ruler if I really need it to look clean.
Okay, I've got my background drawn in a little bit more loosely than I would like to do for finished pencils generally, but it's enough to get the idea across. And now, at this point, I want to start populating it with some figures, uh, which is really the, the point of this whole exercise. So because I have my background in there, everything's established, and I also have my grid behind it, uh, that really makes it very easy for me to just start throwing figures in. I know I want them to be proportional to the, the backgrounds. It's obviously vitally important. So I'm going to go to a different layer here. And I'm just going to start doing uh, a, a sketch of where I want a, a few characters to go, and then we'll go in just a little bit tighter with them. So I think I'll have um, I'll have a character standing just outside this door. So uh, he's going to be about just just about this tall. His head's too big for the size of the figure but that's really that's why um we do a layout i wouldn't want to draw a tight figure and realize oh no he's way too big or you know i, I guess that's a little less of a problem when you're using a computer uh but it's just really not part of my workflow being used to having the ability to just completely redraw a figure so i've got one here i know this foot is slightly higher than this foot but really all that is, is my perspective line just goes along just about here, and it goes just about here. So he's in perspective with what's there, and is really, I didn't have to put uh, much work into that at all in order to make that make sense for me. So I'm going to draw another figure standing, maybe I'll have him leaning against uh, one of these posts. So go ahead and... He's got his arms crossed. Give him a place for his gun. Uh, and again, it's just a, a really quick. All right, so I'm going to draw another another figure a little closer in the foreground here. And 
Maybe I'll have somebody kind of walking up a trail. And I know his height is it's just about here. So I want him to, if I want to bring him down to about where this post is, it's going to bring him to just about there. But it, I find it's so easy just to kind of visualize it. And again, I've got a little big with his head, so let me just fix that, just to make that make a little bit more sense. There. Um, now, if I want to bring a, a figure, maybe I'll have a figure kind of crouching in the foreground here. If I had somebody in the foreground, his you can see it's around where their knees are, just a little higher than their knees. I would have, uh, I'm going to just quickly draw, he'll be a guy in the, the foreground, and here's his, here's his thigh here here's his leg here and you know I'll give him a a hand here and it's really easy for me to know exactly where you know the space that that guy's actually going to take up because uh, because I know where my horizon is he so he's going to fit just about there but I want to have somebody crouching so he's going to be quite a bit lower I'll draw his head here Here's his back. And so here's crouching, looking in at the scene. Um, and again, because I've got my perspective in, it's very easy for me to know exactly where uh, where he's going to fit, just for the sake of of, of doing it. I'm going to draw somebody standing up. I'm going to use the perspective to make sure that it, it works. So you can see I'm drawing the figure really in the perspective that, that I've got. So if this arm is here, this one's going to be here. Pelvis is still in perspective. I want to make sure that my legs follow that line. So here you go, I've got another guy kind of floating up in the air over here. And uh, from there, I can go ahead and take this layer and, you know, knock it right down. Very light, and I can go in. I'll do this crouching guy. I'm going to come in on him here. All right, so this guy's just about done. It's, it's nothing spectacular, really. And I'd certainly like to do some videos that really delve into figure drawing more and anatomy and, and some of those things in a bit more of a glamorous way. But it's enough just to get the idea across of, of the way that I would go ahead and go about and, uh, and draw figures into a scene. In order to fit the scene, I had an, a whole other perspective down here. I wanted to go ahead and, and do some stuff with that, but I think this one ended up running pretty long. So hopefully this makes sense for everybody, and it gave you a little bit of insight uh, into how to make your figures interact and live within their environment. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I will see you again approximately next week.